Hello everyone, for this video we're going to go ahead and create the assembly. Uh, so we're going to uh, take all the parts that we've built before and we're actually going to create this kind of assembled view as well as the exploded view in the assembly. Uh, and then after that we'll go on to create the drawings including this drawing here. Uh, so we're going to go over to SolidWorks, we're going to create a new, and rather than part this time, we're going to do a new assembly. So go ahead select assembly, hit OK, and it should open up as follows. Uh, and immediately upon opening up, it's going to ask you to put in your first part. Um, so whatever your first part is, that part's actually going to be fixed. So I'm going to choose the handle and then kind of build down from the handle. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and hit open, and the handle will show up on the screen. All right, so now we've got the handle piece in, um, and I'm going to go and build uh, the handle, the handle tip, uh, and then the guard piece. Uh, and then from there, I'll do the kind of bottom assembly as well. So let's insert, insert those three components. So we're going to insert component up here. We're going to add the handle tip. And we're going to insert a component and insert the guard. All right, so now I've got those three pieces. And now I need, I'm going to put them together before I insert anything else. Uh, so to line up components, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use this mate uh, function up here. And so if I click on any two uh, surfaces or lines or something, uh, there's different ways I can tell the computer that those two things line up. So right now I've selected the outside surface of kind of this reduced bottom portion of the handle, and that's going to line up with uh, the inside surface of the handle tip. So if I hit mate, it's going to put those together uh, in what it thinks is the best uh, fashion. So it's two cylinders, so it tends to make those uh, concentric. It's going to line those two cylinders up. Uh, so that looks fine. It's not entirely stuck together like I want, but it is a start. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And so next, actually, I'm going to go ahead and select this top surface of that. And I know that one that I want to line up with the top surface there. And so if I still have mate selected, as soon as I select the second surface, you use the control key again to select a second piece. Uh, it will kind of put those two pieces, uh, in this case coincident, it'll make those two surfaces touch. So hit OK. All right, we're almost there. Actually, the one thing we can't see, actually these two are actually lined up pretty well as of now, but I can still rotate this. So I want it to be locked in place so that the a uh, rectangular cutout in the handle tip is going to uh, be lined up with the rectangular cutout here. And so if I take this surface and this surface on the inside, make those two uh, coincident, make those two surfaces line up, it will lock those two in place. And now I can't drag the handle tip. It's locked in place. It's fully defined. It's fully constrained into its location. All right, so next let's get the guard. So the guard. I'm going to select the bottom surface of the handle tip and kind of the top surface of that. All right, those two are lined up. So I'll go ahead and hit OK. Um, and now I'm going to kind of drag this piece over. And next I want to line up the holes. And so I'm going to take kind of the long piece here and the long piece here, make those two line up, hit OK. Um, and actually, I'm going to notice something at this point. So these two holes are different sizes, and they really shouldn't be. Uh, so this is a, a mistake I made in the guard piece um, that I've kind of allowed to happen so I can show you something else. So we've got the, basically the hole is bigger in the guard than it is in the rest of the handle. So I actually want to fix that. I want to go back to my part. And I'm going to, for now, I'm just going to hit OK on that last mate. Uh, and I'm going to go back and open the part. So if I go back, I open the guard piece. It'll keep my assembly open in the background. And here in a second, I should have the, the guard pop up. All right, so here's the guard. This is the first part I made. Um, and actually, what I'm interested in is the, the rectangular cutout. And so if I click on this, uh, this was 15 by 4, 
And really the, the holes in the handle and the handle tip piece and the arm pieces are all 10 millimeters. So this I made too big. Uh, but if I double click on that dimension, if I change this to 10, that actually will line up with what I want. And to recenter this, because it's not going to be centered anymore, I'm actually going to change this to 30. So you just double click to open up a menu and you can modify those. And after I modify it, uh, I need to kind of jump start this. So if I go ahead and save this, I'm going to go ahead and rebuild and save the document. And now I can see the hole is the correct size. And it also, if I look from the top view, it's also centered uh, where it should be. All right, so that's saved, that's taken care of. I'm gonna actually close the part, and then I'm gonna get this to pop up here. So I'm gonna open the assembly again, it's asking if I wanna rebuild the assembly. I'm gonna hit, go ahead and hit yes. All right, and what you'll see is that the assembly is just a series of parts. And when I fixed the part, I fixed the part in the assembly. Uh, and this is a feature of SolidWorks that's uh, really useful. If you find something that's not working in the assembly, not lining up like you think it should, you just go fix the part and it'll fix it in the assembly. And that's what a rebuild does. All right, so now the holes are the same size. I do still need to get them to line up. So I'm gonna select this surface and this surface here. Uh, hit mate to get those two to line up uh, coincident like I want. That's okay. Um, and those, now everything is kind of lined up. I've got the guard, the handle tip, and the handle all together. Go ahead and get back to the isometric view. All right, so I also need to add the bottom part of this pizza cutter. So I'm gonna go back to, uh, well, exit out of mate, and then go back to insert components. So I'm gonna insert the blade This is the fixed blade that I made 40 rather than 80 millimeters in radius. Um, I'm going to insert the rivet. And I'm going to insert two of these arm pieces. So I'm going to insert one arm. And then I'm just going to go ahead. I could do copy and paste. I'm going to insert a second arm like that. All right, so now i got to put together these pieces. So let's put uh, how this fits together is the rivet goes through one arm, the blade, and then the other arm, uh, and then I'm gonna line the arm pieces up and the top of the arm pieces go into this hole up here. All right, so let's put the blade and the rivets and the arms together first. I'm gonna drag this over. Oh, I'm gonna drag all this stuff over. Kind of out of the way, like so. All right, so let's get the arms and the blade lined up first. So to do that, I'm gonna select that and the inside surface of that and go back over to mate and that lined up the holes at least. So hit okay. So I'm gonna drag the arm up a little bit so it's not on the front, it's not going through the blade. All right, so next I want to line up. I'm gonna select the bottom of this, and the top of the blade and that'll put the arm flat on the surface. Go ahead, hit okay. All right, let's do the same for the other arm. So I'm dragging the other arm down here. Uh, I'm gonna select that and the inside of the blade and mate and align those up. Um, and for this one is not lined up the right way. I actually wanna flip that around. Um, and to flip anything around like that, if it you know, the, the, I still want the circles to line up, uh, but I can hit this and it'll flip the arm around for me. So that'll flip it if you've got two different options for getting the things lined up. So I'll go ahead and hit OK at this point. All right, so I do still need to grab, it's gonna be the front surface of this blade, kind of the top surface, like that. Hit OK. Um, and I still wanna, let's pull the, Pull one arm around, now oh, it's still all stuck together. All right, so I wanna get the arms to line up and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna grab this surface here and like this other surface here and that'll flip the arm around for me. So go ahead, hit okay at that point. 
All right, and that's the two arm pieces holding the blade. Now I, get the, now, I, now I have to get the rivet in there. So I'm going to take the outside sur or outside surface of that center, kind of smaller portion of the rivet, and this piece here. And that's one mate to align that. Uh, I'm going to pull the rivet through a little bit. All right, now I'm going to take the top surface here, and I got to get it just right. The bottom surface of this rivet. There we go, and done. All right, so now the rivet's stuck in there. Now I've got the rivet holding together the arm and the blade and everything like that. All right, last piece in all of this. I need to put the end of the arm uh, into kind of the hole I've got in the arm, arm and guard piece. All right, so I'm gonna take, let's take the short side of one of these. I'm gonna find the short side inside this hole here. Well, I did, in fact, line that up. I'm going to flip that one around. It's a little bit better. Hit OK. You'll see this is, is actually, it's actually a start. Um, so it's not exactly like I want. But, all right, so if I take this flat surface here and the flat, long flat surface in one of these, that looks much better. All right, so that is better. Uh, the last thing, I just need to get the depth right. And so this is the most difficult one to click on. So you gotta get the very bottom of the hole. And you gotta get the top of this arm piece. And those two pieces meet up. Uh, they're gonna be coincident. Go ahead, hit OK. And that is our assembled pizza cutter. So I'm gonna go back to the isometric view, like so. Uh, and that looks exactly like that. All right, so last step in all this, we're actually gonna create the uh, exploded view. And so I'm gonna get out of mate, um, and I'm going to go ahead and in this initial menu, hit the exploded view button. Um, and so if I hit this, what's gonna let me do is, it's not gonna lose any of those mates, but it's gonna let me take the components apart. And so I'm gonna try to recreate this view over here. And in an exploded view, uh, you want to stay in isometric, so don't rotate around. Um, and you're going to try to get it so nothing overlaps, but you can still kind of tell how everything fit together. So the handle, handle tip, guard, and then blade, those are all kind of vertical. And then these go along another axis. Uh, it's going to be rivet, arm, blade, other arm. All right, so if you select a component, you'll get this kind of weird um, access thing. And so I'm going to pull this up, pull this up, pull the guard up, and so I got to pull the handle up further and just try to get it so nothing overlaps. All right, so that's good. Nothing in there is overlapping. All right, next I'm going to take a rivet, pull that guy all the way out, pull this one arm off and then pull the other arm back. All right, and that more or less looks like our exploded view. So actually, I can pull the guard piece down back a little bit. Space this evenly. Uh, at this point, the exploded view is all about making it look uh, good. Uh, so, all right, we've got the exploded view. And once we're done with all the exploded view, go ahead, hit OK. Uh, and so now it looks like we just undid all our work. We took everything back together but we can flip and back, back and forth between the two views. So this is my exploded view. If you right click on this top piece up here, you can do collapse to put it all back together and then explode to go to your exploded view. And so one thing I do want to uh, tell you guys about now, so you can go ahead and save at this point. This is exactly what you need for your drawings. But I wanna show you a, a common mistake or a common kind of pitfall that people run into. So if I were to hit, start an exploded view, get distracted, hit exploded view again, um, it's gonna kind of put everything back together before I start the next one. So if I were to do this and kind of move stuff out, I'm just gonna partially explode this and be like, okay. And so now if I go 
and do collapse, it'll put it all back together, go to explode, it goes to that second exploded view. So actually the reason it does this is I've got two exploded views uh, that are available. And if you jump over to this configuration node, open this back up, I've got exploded view one and exploded view two, um, and either one of those are an option. So you can see this one's active, but I don't want that one to be active. I want to delete that. Hit sure. Um, if I go back over here. So now, if I should be giving me. Right, why is this not working? Explode. All right. So I just go back and kind of reactivate that there. All right. So now if I go back and collapse and explode, I have my original uh, exploded view. And that's important if you, again, restart that exploded view. You'll need to delete the exploded views that you don't want. Uh, and that'll cause problems in the drawing if you don't do that. All right. So that's all I had for this video. I will see you for the drawings.